so this Cummins had a little fill pipe here. I don't want that. So what we're gonna do is put a frost plug in. It gives just like a water jacket. You can plug the hole. Um, the bolts will cover the rest. You wanna put a little bit of Loctite on it to seal it up nice and to piss off whoever ever wants to take that back out again. Put it in there. A socket that fits nice and tight around the outside. Don't go too far, otherwise you end up in the oil pan. Good to go. What? Is there something on my face? One of the last sensors that I have to move over is my low oil. There's a hole in the oil pan right there, so we're gonna plug it in there. I prefer to have it a bit higher, but it'll work without having to take the oil pan off and machine all new holes and whatnot. So the threads were just off, so what I did was I took the plug and bored out the center, and then I shaved off my threads on the lathe I'm going to Loctite it, I'm going to spin it in, then I'm going to bang it nice and tight um, so that the bolt or the plug slides onto the collar of the uh, sensor and then um, when the Loctite dries I'll give it that extra little twist and the O-ring will seal around the outside uh, right there. So hopefully this works. Hopefully I didn't machine it too tight. If you want it nice and tight, otherwise you're going to have leaks. Let's see if this works. That's perfect. I won't crank it just tight, I'll let that Loctite seal and I'll just give it an extra little twist. Should fit perfect. So this is a flywheel from uh, Diesel Conversion Specialist. Um, it was supposed to fit the 4060 but it didn't. The holes were wrong so I had to drill three new holes. I just laid the other flywheel on top, drilled the holes and then countersunk them with, uh, with a flat bit. And uh, now it fits, I'm glad I tried that before I put it in because I would have had to pull the engine back out again. So what you want to do is put your adapter plate on to hook up to your transmission with a flywheel and get yourself a six liter Ford starter. You're also going to have to, because of the uh, different starter, right in the bell housing there where the little half moon is, where your starter comes out, you have to notch the back of it out here because the cone will bottom out, won't engage your gear. So it's a pain to do it when it's when it's uh, in the truck, so you want to do that beforehand. Fit everything dry first before you uh, waste a whole pile of time. My wife's not at home, she took the kids away, so I might be able to get away with this. She wouldn't let me do this if she was home, I know that. But uh, what we're doing is heat shrinking that ribs for the AC compressor from the 5.9 onto the Vortec compressor. And you can see I machined the ribs off and those were the, the grooves left over from the belt but we're going to a much wider belt so um, I stuck the, the outside pulley in the, in the oven get it nice and hot and then you can see I machined the inside of it out and then I also put a little step in there because it's this is much bigger than the than the old one now the the clutch is actually able to go inside that because I cut a little step in there. So hopefully, should just be able to tap that right on. I'm going to try the basement on the concrete. Just a bit too much bounce on the counter. Nice tight fit, you can see. Flush on the back. 
still warm. Nice groove on the inside. And my clutch can slide nicely inside that and lock up. Now we've got a GM bearing clutch assembly with the ribs of a 5.9 or a Dodge compressor. Good to go. To follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. <laughs>